Uh, so welcome back to this uh, chapter 2. Uh, so in chapter 2 we are going to be looking at descriptive uh, statistics. Uh, so remember we said you could have uh, you could have descriptive you could have descriptive statistics and then you could have inferential you could have inferential uh, statistics. So you could have descriptive statistics. So in descriptive statistics you're basically describing you're basically describe, describing your data. So you're doing things like uh, frequency uh, distributions. So you're doing things like uh, frequency distributions. Uh, and then you could have inferential uh, statistics when you try to do things, you know, when you try to predict, when you do things like projections, for instance. Uh, so if you do things like pro uh, progress uh, projections using things like uh, regression, for instance, then you're inferring you are trying to guess a value based on data that you already have uh, but in descriptive statistics you're merely describing your data uh, and one of the, the the tools that we're going to use very frequently uh pun intended is a frequency distribution yeah so we're going to be using a frequency distribution quite frequently so a frequency distribution is just a technique uh for you to uh see your data that's a technique for you to see uh, the different classes in your data uh, in the book you have an example of over drinks uh, of a store uh, and, and this store you go you're seeing the drinks uh, purchase, uh, purchases uh, so you could have so you have the purchases here of drinks and then you have maybe dr. paper so let me just create some um, some random values cork you have Fanta you have Mirinda so we have uh, Mirinda you have Mirinda then you have cork then Fanta then uh, Dr. Paper then Fanta then you have Mirinda again then you have cork then you have Fanta you have Fanta you have cork you have Mirinda you have Mirinda you have Dr. Paper, you have Dr. Paper, you have Dr. Paper, you have Fanta. Uh, so basically, uh, I'm going to be using Excel a bit because uh, the book actually uses Excel. Uh, and it's going to be uh, it's, it's going to be an asset for you to actually know how to use Excel for statistics because it's, it's one of the most common, the more common programs. Um, you probably won't be examined on using Excel because that, that you did that last semester when you did um, uh, when you did the introduction to computer applications uh, or to basic computer literacy. I won't be examining you in Excel, but it's going to be useful for you to be able to do this in Excel, especially if you end up uh, doing online tests. Uh, it means you can actually get the answers a bit quicker. Um, so I'm going to be using Excel to demonstrate uh, many of these concepts. Uh, so anyway, so you have purchases. Uh, so to construct a frequency distribution, you're going to need the categories. And then you're going to need the frequency, the different frequencies uh, of, of the in, in the categories. Uh, so if you're using categorical data for Excel, you can use the count if uh, function. The count if function uh, will expect a range. If you look at a constructor, it's going to expect a range. So the range is actually the data that you want to whose frequency you want to, to check. Uh, then, uh, just a minute, I should have had the categories here. Dr. Paper, uh, Dr. Paper, uh, you have Coke, you have uh, Fanta, you have Mirinda. Yeah, so this is, uh, these are my categories. Then, to get the frequency, you can count manually, but that's going to be very silly uh, if you're using Excel. You can just simply use the count if function. Uh, what did I just do? So you can use the count if count if function, and then it's going to expect a range in the first cell. Uh, so in the first cell, you're gonna have a range, and that's gonna be this two all the way to twenty-two. So that's the range, yeah. Then you're gonna have the value that you're looking for that you're counting so 
So that gives you five. So this basically is telling you that Dr. Paper, doc, sorry, Dr. Pepper was purchased five times, uh, and so on and so forth. Then Coke was purchased four, and so on and so forth. So you can actually check the value to just be sure we are doing this correctly. Um, so this gives us 21. Is 21 the actual value we have here? Yeah, so there are stops on 22. But if we... Uh, something I want you to be careful about is that uh, if we had, for instance... If we had, for instance, something of the sort... Um, If you're not careful about some of the things, uh, I'm trying to simulate an error here. Okay, so you have Mirinda, you have. Uh, what as if I have Fanta again here? Do I have Dr. Paper? So the first one goes from A5 to A25. Um, so that's A5 to A25. It's counting downwards. Um, A5, A25, A4. Okay, so anyway, uh, what I wanted to say is that you have to fix these values. Because uh, you can see it's actually moving because here it is counting from A2 then here it actually counts from uh, What did I just do? So here it counts from A2 to A22 here it's actually going to count from A3 to A23 And here it's going to count from A... okay It doesn't seem to matter So anyway, it might be useful to fix these values just to make sure that the range is not shifting um, so you just want to make sure the range is not shifting so this is the sum so when you have this uh, table over here this is what you call a frequency distribution table so this over here is what you call a frequency distribution table and you can actually visualize this uh, using a, a bar chart so you select your data and then you can visualize this using a bar chart uh, so you have something of the sort um, you have something of the sort uh, if you want to get rid of the uh, if you want to get rid of the spaces you can there's a no gap option so if you do that you can actually have it display like this uh, but in our case I think uh, it looks better if you have the gaps in there so we have something of the sort um, so if you just go back to our data let me first get rid of the table of the graph rather oh it's not going anywhere uh, what's going on so if you just get rid of the uh, graph and we have the data back so this is what you call a frequency distribution uh, you might be interested in the uh, relative relative frequency distribution so the relative frequency distribution uh, you actually express these as fractions of the total distribution uh, so this is going to be that uh, divided by the sum the total frequency uh, so you want to fix this obviously uh, you don't want the formula to be shifting uh, so then you have let me just paste the formula over so this should sum to one, because uh, these are fractions of uh, these are proportions of the of the total. So yeah, so you could also have what you call a percent frequency distribution. You can have what you call a percent uh, frequency distribution. Uh, so again, you have uh, you're gonna have the relative. If you multiply that by a hundred, uh, you should get the percent frequency distribution 
and again if you sum this this should give you a hundred percent because these are proportions of a whole so you should have um so i spoke about when you have the frequency distribution i spoke about you could have you could visualize this using a bar chart uh but alternatively the other chart that we use very commonly for frequency distributions is a pi pi chart uh, so this gives you the distribution the distributions of different categories as uh so you're having the distributions of different categories as proportions of a whole yeah um so the other thing that you could do because i've been showing you how to do this with categorical data or qualitative data 